in a world bent touting certain diets and restrictive eating. Our guest today desires we learn about our core strength. After releasing her book, Your Worthy Body, written for women over 40, my guest had mom saying, I need something like this for my daughters. Her hope is to be a conduit between mom and daughter to help them both foster a healthy relationship with food, exercise, and their body so they can grow in their relationship with each other. She does this through her new book, Your Core Strength, a Christ-centered diet culture-free book for young women. Today, we're going to be talking about how your core strength can bring freedom and empowerment in your health. Welcome back to your hope-filled perspective, where it's always our goal to restore hope, renew minds, and empower listeners to live in their God-given identity. Today, we're talking about how your core strength can bring freedom and empowerment to your health. So to start off today's episode, I want to remind you of a couple of verses that come out of Genesis. Genesis 1.29 says, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And the second verse is Genesis 9, 3. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. Today's guest is Amy Connell. She's a certified personal trainer who wants you to take a rest day. And she's a nutrition coach who wants you to enjoy dessert. That is part of the reason Amy and I are friends. She helps women feel and function well in simple and grace-filled ways so that they can fulfill their purpose. She's the host of the Graced Health podcast, author of the books, You Are Worthy Body for Women and Your Core Strength for Teen Girls. And she's the creator of the low-impact online class, Be Complete. She lives in Houston, Texas area with her husband and straight turned princess pitbull named grace welcome back to the program amy thank you so much dr michelle it's always such a joy to be together we've been together quite a few times you've been on my podcast and i have been on yours but i always feel like god gives us a fresh word for our audiences yes absolutely and i think we are coming up on four years now that we have known each other oh. and i believe you are the most, um, what's the right word? You, you're, you have been a guest on the graced health podcast more than any other guest. So you hold the distinction and the honor of that. <laughs> well, it is a privilege and a joy. I love it whenever we get to have a conversation and today we're going to have a conversation that I think is really important because we're entering that time of year where, well, let's just say we women tend to feel a little pressure to improve our outward appearance. You know, we have prom and graduation and Mother's Day events and weddings. And I know when my son got married, I did feel the pressure to show up looking my absolute best. And then after the wedding, hmm, it was hard to sustain that. So we're going to have a conversation about that today because I don't think God calls us to any kind of living that's not sustainable with him. Amen. I agree. Now, I know frequently our ministry often comes out of our own needs and hurts and desires. How is that true for you? Yes, it absolutely does. I, like so many young women and into young adults and young moms really struggled with uh, my body. I used food and exercise as a way to try and manage it and to be a certain size. And it, that really turned into pretty much idling, idling my, my body, the six pack abs that I always wanted and never had uh, idling, rece uh, achieving certain physical uh, accomplishments whether that was so many hours of exercise a week, whether that was uh, just whatever that was. Um, there was a time when I was just doing laundry and God whispered, you are spending more time thinking about yourself than you are about me. And cool. specifically thinking about the food you're going to eat and your exercise. That was a little bit like a rudder on a huge ship. 
it took a long time for me to start turning. But what I did was I started listening to God and really what the purpose of physical health was. And it was not to have those six pack abs. It was not so I could achieve a certain amount of hours of exercise per week. Instead, it was so I could do the things that he is calling me to do, either on a broad spectrum, on a daily spectrum, in a service spectrum. So that journey that God took me on and I walked through with him really led me to being passionate about passing that on to other women my age. I know I'm not the only one who struggles with body image issues. At 91%, according to statistics, of women are unhappy with their body. So I know I'm not alone in that. And I, like we said at the beginning, I am passionate about helping women take care of themselves. I am a personal trainer at heart. I love teaching women how to move so they're, maybe their knees don't feel as bad or some exercises so they can support their back. I mean, that is a huge passion of mine, but it is for a broader purpose of feeling well so we can function well, not so we look a certain way. I think that's an important distinction. And for me, I'm very achievement oriented, just like you. I think most of us who write books and podcasts, we are, but it's because there is a passion behind it. But I'm very motivated when my watch like vibrates to let me know you need to stand up now or, you know, you met your goal yesterday. What's wrong with you today? Kind of thing that at least that's how I interpret some of the messages that it sends me. It can be very motivating and keep me on the right track. But if I'm not careful, it can be too consuming and put too much of an emphasis in a wrong place. So I think you and I have that in common. And I would dare say a lot of our listeners do too. You know, things that start off as good can become idols if we're not careful. Yes. I think one example that we have seen that is, you know, in the Bible, when Jesus talked about the Pharisees, you know, beating their chest and and praying is good. Talking to God is good. But when we are doing it, so other people will look at us, maybe it's not so good. And I know that that's a bit of an extreme example, but having the watch buzz you to tell you to get up and move around, that can be helpful but we don't want to be tied to it. Right. And so sometimes it's not necessarily the action, but it's the heart and the why behind what we're doing. 100% agree with that. I would be curious, Amy, and I'm sure some of our listeners would too, who know that you are a mom of boys as I am. So being a mom of boys, how did you come to a place where you felt you could understand young women well enough to write this book for them? That is such a fair and a good question. And I'm glad you asked that because probably if someone knows me and my community knows that I have two boys, one's in college, one's in high school, and there's a good chance that someone's listening, thinking something's not fully here. (laughs) How does she really know? And to that, I would first say, I don't fully know. I don't have daughters. However, I was a daughter once, and I think that things have only gotten more challenging. Mm -hmm. I didn't have social media. I didn't have Instagram. I didn't have a barrage of 60 second shorts and reels telling me diet culture, uh, fake news, (laughs) if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I will say this comes from that. However, from a more practical standpoint, I have trained young women for about five years. I have spent time with them. I've done some lessons with them. I've listened to them. I've spoken with moms of daughters. Many, many of my dearest, closest friends have daughters and they know where I stand with a lot of things. So they have come with that. I've also done a lot of research. Dr. Lisa Damore has some wonderful resources about uh, girls and raising girls. She's not faith-based, but I have learned from her as well, uh, or from her work. And I think between all of that, it is, it's gotten me to a point where I can speak into that. Am I going to hit everything perfectly right all the time? Probably not. And I, 
I think we have to allow for nuance with our daughters. However, if this can be the starting point, if this can be a seed for discussions, for honest, vulnerable, real discussions between a daughter and the strong woman in her life, whether it's a mom or a grandma or an aunt or, or someone else to change the way we think about our bodies and our health, then that is the intent of this book. It is not to come in and say, I know, know your daughter so well, and this is what she needs to read. Mm -hmm. This is like we talked about, or like you mentioned at the beginning, this is a conduit and it's opening the door that is so incredibly challenging as a mom who may also have her own struggles with food and exercise and body image. So to start off our conversation today, what do you mean by core strength? Yes. Core strength is actually an acronym that I came, I say I came up with. This was not me. <laughs> this was God putting things in. When I started thinking about how this book needed to look. And this was such a directive by God. Um, when I did write this the period of time, I started realizing that some of the main points I wanted to communicate to young women turned into an acronym. <laughs> so core is actually an acronym and, uh, C stands for calling. We take care of our bodies or ourselves so we can do what we're called to do. O stands for originality. Our body is a gift from God, original and unique. He did not create us to all be the same. R stands for relationships. So we take care of ourselves so we can enjoy and engage in relationships with not only other people, but also with God. Mm -hmm. So reaching out to others, looking up to God, getting that fullness of Christ, uh, kind of with that, that cross, right. And then E is everything. Everything counts in our health journeys, not just food and fitness. This has been one of the biggest things that I have learned in my journey on grace health is this is not just about food and exercise. This is about our mental health. As you are well aware, this is about our sleep. This is about our relationships, our connection, our getting outside and getting fresh air and getting sunlight and all the things that God has given us. So when you put all of that together, our core strength is we take care of our original bodies in a variety of ways, including relationships. So we can do what we're called to do. So it's kind of a lot packed in, but anytime you see me writing core, it will be in all caps because it is an acronym for the holistic approach of our health and our strength. And that is not just doing a bunch of sit-ups and squats. And that's where you and I overlap and complement each other so well, because we both believe that to have full and complete health, you have to address mind, body, and soul. And that's where I think our medical institution by and large lets us down. We cannot leave out the spiritual aspect of this. In fact, that I would argue that has to be at the center. But I'm curious from your perspective, what does God have to do with our health? Well, everything. <laughs> That's <laughs> the bottom line. Let's get a little more specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What does God have to do with our health? So God created us, right? We are here. He has put our souls and our bodies on here with and for a purpose. And that can be a little overwhelming sometimes, especially for young women who are like, I don't know what my purpose is. I just want to pass my chemistry final. That's right. fine. And so maybe that's what you need to be doing, you know, with, with your little, what I call a micro purpose, but our body is not here to look great on Instagram. Our body is here to do things to glorify God. Absolutely. We want to take a holistic approach to taking care of that because when we do, we can fulfill the things that God is wanting us to do. It 
really comes down to, you know, we want to love God and we want to love others. And it's harder to do that when our bodies and our minds are not equipped to do that to its fullest extent. Extent, Loving others can come in a lot of different ways, just like our bodies. <laughs> and that's where, when we refocus ourselves to, okay, what does God want me doing with this? And yeah, right after the holidays, I'm, I'm not this, quite the same size that I was before the holidays. Okay. But does that change what he wants me doing? And not really. Not really for me. Now, maybe if you're a model or maybe if you're like a, a fitness, whatever they call them, I don't even <laughs> like where they get maybe, maybe, but for the most of us, it doesn't really matter. And our bodies were meant to change. I'm getting off track here a little bit, but that's really what God has to do with our health is our health is for him. Our health is to glorify him and do the things that he is wanting us to do, not to turn it and be really happy with the image in the mirror. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more after the break. Friends, we're going to take a real short break, but when we come back, Amy and I will continue our conversation on how your core strength can bring freedom and empowerment to your health. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your hope-filled perspective where my guest, Amy Connell, and I are talking about how your core strength can bring freedom and empowerment to your health. And that is certainly where I want to be. Amy, how does the diverse body of Christ, what does that have to do with our body image? We live in a society where body image is so attacked and so undermined. So I would love for you to talk to that point. Yes. One of the greatest examples I can provide is something I wrote a blog post about years and years ago uh, and was reminded about actually through Leslie Schilling's work in uh, she's the author of feed yourself. Do you have a dog? I this did. is a stream. Okay. What kind of dog is it? It's a little four pound Pomeranian, a four pound Pomeranian. So we talked about my stray turned pit bull, yeah. stray turned it princess pit bull named Grace. <laughs> Grace is about 60 pounds. She actually made it, made her way onto my lap last night. And that was, it was just very awkward, but it was, I loved it. So you have a four pound Pomeranian. I have a 60 pound pit bull. I would never expect my, my grace to weigh four pounds, just like you would never expect your Pomeranian to weigh four pounds. God created all of our bodies to be different shapes and different sizes and different colors and to be able to do different things. I love the example of Simone Biles and Michael Phelps. Mm -hmm. Both of them are um, record holders, I, I believe. I mean, they've had multiple, multiple gold medals. I don't think Michael Phelps could get on the mat and do the flippy, turny, tucky, tucky, whatever that <laughs> Simone Biles does. And likewise, she may be a wonderful swimmer, but there, I'm pretty sure she's not going to be able to swim the way he does. We intentionally have diversity and God created our bodies to be so different. Oftentimes the fitness industry and diet culture will tell us that, yeah, you can accept how tall you are, but you still better be super lean. You can accept that Amy has a size eight shoe and I'm making this up and Dr. Michelle has a size six shoe, but we still better be under a certain percentage of body fat. And that's just not how God designed us. So the diverse body of Christ, I believe is something that we have to remember when we are on a path to accepting our bodies more, because it may be that what we think we should look like is not aligned with how God designed us. Say that again, because that's really important. Let me see if I can remember it. What we think we should look like mm -hmm. may not be aligned with how God designed us. Mm -hmm. Which really comes back to 
not equating our identity no. with our outward appearance, really. I mean, if yes. we get right down to it, God created each of us with a purpose and gave us our identity in him. But too often, the influence of culture feeds us misinformation about where our worth comes from. Yes. So how do we help our daughters live a healthy lifestyle without creating these food and body image issues when they are saturated with information coming from the world? And that is the hundred million dollar question, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) It is. I would I so wish I could sit down with the listener who is struggling with the, with this, with their daughter and just hold your hands and say, you're, you're probably doing better than you think you are. I've had the privilege of having a lot of different conversations on my own show about this. And I think I would pass along a couple things, a couple points. Number one is as and I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the word moms because it's easier to say, but as women of influence, Our daughters are paying attention more to what we say about ourselves and about other people than we do about them. So be wise about the words you choose about yourself. Mm. If it's, oh, sweetie, you look wonderful. You look beautiful. And then you turn around and say, God, I got to go work off all of this food. I have to go to the gym today. I'm so fat. I'm fill in the blanks. And look, we've all thought them. I think about that stuff. I have to filter stuff out of my head all the time because this is a constant attack by the enemy. That's one thing I would say. The other thing is I think there's an opportunity to go along this journey and just let your daughter witness it. So what does that look like? Maybe that means saying, I feel so jumbled up in my head. I just need to get outside and go for a walk and clear it out. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's, a, maybe it's something like, I skipped breakfast this morning and I had such brain fog. I couldn't pay attention in this, with this big work project or with something that I was doing. Or maybe it's, gosh, I've always enjoyed ice cream after dinner and that's great. And now I'm realizing that my stomach doesn't feel very well in the middle of the night. And, and I, so that's the second one. And then the third is, and this is so hard. This is so, so hard and I'm still learning, but trying very hard not to dichotomize food and not, not saying there are good and bad food. Those two verses that you read at the beginning use the word every, yeah. every seed, every plant, everything that moves. God gave us all the foods. And while some are going to be more nutritionally dense and provide more nutrients, there is a time and a place. And I'm, I'm like, I'm putting up the armor because someone's going to come at me for this. There's a time and a place for Cheez-Its. There's a time and a place to have orange slice candy. And that might be if your daughter hasn't eaten all day because her friends don't eat lunch and she's been skipping breakfast and she has a game, get some energy in you and, and be careful not to use language that can contribute to having a moral association with foods. God gave us every food. He gave us all the food. We can find some that work better for our bodies, for our original and unique bodies, but avoiding good food, bad food, don't eat that. That's not healthy. Eat that. That's healthy. Instead, focus on how it makes you feel and function. How does it make you feel in your head? How does it make you feel in your body? How does it make you feel in your soul? when you are enjoying something really wonderful with your friends, that's soul giving. So really what I hear you saying is nowhere in scripture, does God say this is good food? This is bad food. Yes. He gave us all foods 
but we still get to choose what works better at any given time or place or for our body's needs. I remember when my husband and I were going through significant health battle and there, I had one follower on social media who just kept zinging me with, well, if you would take this food out of your diet and if you would avoid that food and it, you probably were going through this because you ate this food. And at the time I was challenging myself to read the Bible through in six weeks, which was quite an undertaking. But as I was, I kept getting to all these scriptures, like the two that I read at the beginning where God says, no, I gave you all food to enjoy. Right. And I thought, buddy, you are not theologically sound and I'm not going to take my diet input from you. Now, yes, there are foods that are better for me to give me energy and to help me focus and to strengthen my body. But his emphasis really just kind of made me want to just put up my hand and say, talk to the hand. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And Again, I'm going to quote Leslie Schilling on here because it's, these are the words that she provided, but our bodies are good and wise. God made our bodies good and wise to know and to be able to process. And at the end of the day, from a chemical reactionary, I mean, carbs are carbs that it, it's energy. It doesn't matter what kind it is. And the, yeah, we can get into a conversation and I love, I love nutritional conversations about micronutrients and how different things can support, the, you know, different areas of our body and our brain. But at the end of the day, our bodies are good and wise and God gave us every food. So listen to your original body. There's a chance that you and I probably eat a little differently because we know what makes us feel and function well. And that's okay because he gave us discernment. He gave our bodies feedback. And I think those are the conversations that are helpful to have with our children, as opposed to uh, good and bad foods. Yeah. Yeah. So in a world that's so focused on looking good on the outside, and let's face it, there that's not necessarily a bad thing. You and I both showed up camera ready today. That is not a bad thing. But what's more important is that we understand how to fuel the confidence on our daughter's insides. And I like your emphasis on really paying attention to the words that we speak because our kids are listening and they are watching. And when we send incongruent messages, that's where I think they get confused. Any other practical tips on how we can fuel that God confidence on the inside when they walk into the classroom and everybody's camera ready or they've got their filters on, so to speak. I think one powerful thing that we can do as parents, and I'm a mom of two boys and I have employed this with my own parenting when appropriate, is take them along the journey and saying, you know, I am really struggling with this, but I know that this is not what God wants for me. And, and kind of inviting them in to witness your own transformation, your own thought process. Once kids get to be in that, in the age that is old enough that we're talking about here, right? 14, 15 and up, they don't need us telling them what to do because they're, they're ready to go. But I think that they can learn a lot from me saying, I've gained a lot of weight through my perimenopause and it's kind of hard for me to deal with, but at the same time, it's not impacting anything that I am supposed to be doing. And so I'm going to go buy some new pants, which is a true story by me, <laughs> by the way. And at the same time, remembering to weave in how God is working through our lives in the bodies that we have and not t 
totally focusing on that, but maybe focusing on, oh my gosh, I was volunteering in the kids ministry today and I was running around with this little three-year-old and it was so fun. And I was so grateful to be able to have the energy to do that. And so showing examples of how we are serving others and how we are doing the things that God is wanting us to do with our bodies, rather than shaming what we have and then turning around and saying, okay, well, now I'm going to go, now I'm going to go volunteer at church. That's confusing. Yes. Friends, we're going to take a real quick break, but we're going to continue our conversation. When we come back, I'm going to ask Amy to share her hope-filled perspective with you about finding freedom and empowerment in your health. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Amy, what encouragement would you give women who feel like they're doing their best, but when they look around, they never feel like they're doing enough? That is the major pain point of the women in my community. Yeah, I could see that. It is so common. And my response would be to come in and hold your hand and say, you probably are. And are you caught in some comparison? Mm. Are you caught in comparing what you think you're supposed to be doing either visually or because of the diet culture rules of you need to eat a certain way, you need to move a certain way, and instead paying attention to how you feel, paying attention to what makes you happy when you move, what type of movement, paying attention to the foods that give you more energy, that give you more clarity, that help you sleep well. We haven't even talked about sleeping, but I'm a huge fan of it, by the way. (laughs) And paying attention to the things that fill your body, mind, and soul. When you do that, you are probably doing exactly what God wants you to do. And to stop the, stop comparing and stop assuming that just because some new nutritional science came out that says that you have to eat 400 grams of protein a day and you're not doing it. So now you feel shame. Well, maybe that's not necessarily what's best for you. Well, and how about the fact that the diet culture seems to change what the standard is like about every 18 months, it feels like, you know, it, it is like a roller coaster when you follow the diet culture trends and what they say is the best way to lose weight and how much protein versus how many carbs. First it was all carbs, then it was no carbs. Then, So I, I kind of feel like I'm at the point where I don't want to listen to them anymore because I feel like they either don't know what they're talking about or they're manipulating me for their own financial gain. That would be the skeptic in me coming out. But I'm old enough now that I've seen that it changes so often. And I just, I don't see how our bodies have changed that much since the Garden of Eden. Oh, I completely agree. Yes. One more reason to ditch all of the diet culture rules. They're always changing. And I do agree. I think that it's because a lot of the reason is because it, it that stuff comes out. There's a reason those kinds of things come out in December because they know in January, there's a lot of people who are wanting to make some changes now. Yes. We who are wanting to make money. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. So I, I just think that all roads lead back to eating the foods, every, the, every food that God gave us. He had our bodies have a wonderful communication system that has hormones that says, I'm hungry. We have hormones that say, you know, the ghrelin hormone says we're hungry. The leptin hormone says, okay, let's stop. We're good. We have intuitively good bodies that can thrive without an ounce of diet culture rules. <laughs> yeah. So if we have listeners today, moms, maybe, maybe moms are listening with their daughters and they're realizing mm, maybe they've listened a little too much to the diet culture and they want to change and they want to get back to some more graced health living. 
what could they begin to implement today that's not going to be part of that pendulum swing, but sustain them and allow them to walk free in Christ? You're looking for a simple answer. <laughs> and that's kind of hard to do. And honestly, I one of the best things that I can suggest is to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. We've talked a lot about food. We've talked some about movement. God also designed our bodies and our brains to need sleep and rest. We cannot fully live out what we need to do in a day. And it's difficult to make the kinds of choices that make sense for our body when our brains and our bodies have not received the sleep and the rest that it needs. So that sounds a little different than what we've been talking about, but in my opinion, it's one of the greatest foundations that we can have to fully optimize how we are feeling, not only in our physical health, but in our mental health as well. So that would be one of the first things I do is like, get, get enough sleep, go to bed, turn down your phones. Uh, I have a whole chapter in your core strength about how can I sleep better? Because I know that this is a challenge for young people. So I would say, practically speaking, that's one of the things that I would recommend. Now, spiritually speaking, obviously, as a, as a faith-based show, I mean, you and I are both Christ followers, getting into God's word, seeing what he says, seeing what he wants. Um, I would say one of my favorite scriptures that go with this conversation is Romans 12, 2 which is do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good and pleasing will. The patterns of this world are diet culture. The patterns of this world are the 60 second reels and shorts and TikToks that can tell you how to lose weight. I mean, what? <laughs> The patterns of this world are us feeling like we have to be a certain size in order to be good. God's will for us is to take care of ourselves and where however that manifests in our body, then we use that to glorify him, to do the things that we want to be able to do and not be so concerned about what we look like. And I get it. I'm there too. I have to fight this all the time. I'm 49 years old. I'm right in the thick of perimenopause. It's hard. It's really hard. But that's when I also take the, um, the scripture from second Corinthians 10, I'm doing this off the top of my head. I apologize. 10, five, um, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So when we get caught in that, when we are 49 years old and we've gained a bench of weight and our pants don't fit, we take that thought cop captive of I'm not good enough. I've messed up. I've done something wrong. And we turn and we instead think about what we can do to glorify God and to show others his love. And that starts with loving and accepting ourselves, even when it looks, mm -hmm. when it doesn't look the way that we think it should. And often it doesn't look the way we think it should, because God's ways are higher and different than ours. I'm, I'm so glad that you brought up both sleep and being in God's word, because as a neuropsychologist, I can tell you the importance of good quality sleep in order to regenerate those naturally occurring neurotransmitters that help all your cognitive processes. And when I am lacking in sleep, I tend to make less appropriate decisions. I tend to make decisions more off how I feel than off the facts. I tend to listen to my emotions more than I listen to the truth. And in order to make decisions off of truth, we have to be grounded in God's word. So those are two very practical, but very necessary steps. If you're wanting to make a change starting today. Now, Amy, as we wrap up this episode, if a listener is resonating with our conversation, what hope filled perspective would you want to leave them with today? 
Your original God designed body is good and made with a purpose and for a purpose. And he gave you the discernment to figure out how to, to care for that in a variety of different ways. Most importantly, caring for your relationship with God, but also caring, you know, caring for others and allowing ourselves to figure it out. You don't have to have a plan or a program. You have this within you. And when you take the time to listen, to respond, to explore, to be curious, you can absolutely get to a place where you feel better, dare I say more confident in what you are doing so that you can do the things that God is wanting you to do. And as you're staying in his word, you are not going to hear those messages that you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not beautiful enough. In fact, you're going to hear the opposite. You are going to hear that you are beautiful, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are the apple of God's eye. So friends, if you are in that battle, like so many of us, where we're where we're tempted to compare ourselves to what the world says is good and beautiful and right. Stay grounded in the truth of what God says, and you will be more confident. You will shine from within to the outside. And that's something that's not going to fade as you age, (laughs) go through perimenopause, start to show more wrinkles. In fact, it's going to be more beautiful. Amy, thank you for coming on and sharing about your core strength, our calling, our originality, our relationships with others and God, and remembering that God created every part of us as part of his divine purpose. Friends, if there's been something in today's episode that has encouraged your heart, maybe given you pause to think about things just a little differently, consider sharing this episode with a friend and make sure that you pick up Amy's book. Amy, where can they find your core strength? Absolutely. Your core strength will be available on Amazon and most major outlets. Uh, You can go learn, I would say go to gracedhealth.com under the book section and click on your core strength and you'll be able to find plenty of information about where to find it there. I also will, I'll have various ways. So it'll be print, um, Kindle and then audio book too, because I know that that's how young women like to listen, like to read books right now is through their ears. So we will make sure to put all of Amy's information in our show notes that you can find at drmichelleb.com. Go to the podcast tab and you'll find all of Amy's information there about her new book, as well as Your Worthy Body, which we've talked about on the podcast before. Friends, it's been a delight to be with you to talk about what truly matters, our core strength as it is found in him. It's been a delight to be with you until we meet again next week. May you have a hope-filled week.